So we'll click here and add the image that we want to use for all of the versions of this coffee. And once we've done that, we'll scroll down to price. We can apply unique prices to decaf or regular or have it all be the same price. We'll say that for us, everything's the same price. It doesn't matter whether you order the regular or decaf version of it. So we will apply a single price to all SKUs. That is $12.99. And then for quantity, we can treat it as it's one bulk thing with a single quantity that we're selling. In our case, we're gonna say that we have a certain number of this type of coffee in its regular form, and then a certain number of decaf bags of this coffee as well. So we're gonna apply a unique quantity by attribute to each SKU. We'll click the second option and select our attribute. Of course, that's our caffeine attribute. And then we're gonna tell it how many of these we have. Decaf, we'll say we have a thousand. And yes, which is the caffeinated version, we're gonna say we have 3,000. Now we'll go back up to the top here and click next. And notice it tells us these are the products we're about to create. So once again, when we're doing this, Magento is going to actually create two new products. And when you're on the page, choosing whether it's decaf or regular, those are technically two different products that you're choosing from. For the customer, they don't know that and it doesn't make a difference to them. That's just how it's treated on the back end and especially as far as our inventory is concerned. So it's just kind of giving us an overview of what's about to happen. These two things are about to be created. That looks great. We click next. And here we go. Now we have our two configurations. Now we'll scroll down and we need to add an image here as well. We're adding one image here for the main product itself. This will be the image that shows up when this single configurable product, which is composed of two smaller products, but is also a product type of its own. When we see this in search results or in a listing on the website, this is also the first picture that will show up before someone selects regular or decaf. So we'll want to use the same image we used for the two SKUs. Then we'll go to our search engine optimization, URL key. We'll just go with, with house blend. Meta title looks good. For our meta keywords, let's go with the name of the coffee and then maybe just the term coffee. And we'll want to cut down this meta description a bit. Notice we do still have the option to add customizable options as well. You can have a mix of configurations and customizable options. We're not gonna get into that here. We're gonna try to keep it simple, but we could say that we can offer this ground or whole bean and it doesn't really make a difference as far as our inventory is concerned. We don't want them to be treated as two different types of products. So we could provide customable options for ground or whole bean, but we're not gonna worry about that. Just know that you can do that. And we're not going to worry about anything else here either. So now we're going to save this product. And notice that it gives us an option here as to what to do with this attribute set. We've added new attributes here. And Magento is now going to allow us to create a new attribute set on the fly. So we don't have to go back into our attribute settings and create and edit those manually. So we have the option to add configurable attributes to the current attribute set, which I believe is currently default. Add configurable attributes to the new attribute set based on what we're currently using, which is what we're gonna do. Or add configurable attributes to an existing attribute set. We want to create a new attribute set based on these attributes that we've just added. So we'll choose this option and we'll call this attribute set coffee because there are, may well be other attributes that we want to add for coffee. We'll confirm that. And now it's been saved. Notice our attribute set has been changed to coffee. Everything else should be just as we set it up. We've got this message that we need to refresh some stuff in our cache management. So we'll go do that real quick. And we need to flush the page cache once again. 
And once that's done, let's go take a look. As usual, we'll click on our account name and open the customer view in a new tab. This time we'll just do a search for coffee. We actually got a few results this time, probably because we used the term coffee in the description or something along those lines for these two mugs. That's why these showed up. But of course, we have our one pound coffee bean central house blend right here as well. So we'll click on that. And as you can see, we have all the usual information. Then we have our caffeinated option here. Note it is required. And we have to choose an option, decaf or yes. We probably could have gone with decaf or regular. That may have been better terminology to use here. But yes is the answer to whether we want this caffeinated. We're going to go with yes. And there we go. More information, caffeinated, yes. Obviously, this would be different right here if we chose decaf up here. And let's go back and take a look at one more thing. Back on the back end of our website, if we go back to products and catalog, just to demonstrate that multiple simple products were created during this process, we can see now that we have three new things. We have the decaf version of this simple product of our house blend. And we have, I guess, technically the yes version. Again, we maybe should have gone with the regular here, but that's all right. We have this other version, the caffeinated version of our house blend as a simple product. And then we have the configurable product itself, which contains both of these. So to recap, for this situation, it was better to create this coffee product as a configurable product rather than a customizable product because in this case, we had fewer, more discrete options rather than a very open-ended customization option. And we also have different products that are coming from what are essentially different inventory silos. So we can track inventory on these separately, which is gonna be really helpful for our operations. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of the differences and the benefits of customizable options on a basic product or configurable products. Hopefully now you have a good idea of the differences between creating a simple product that has customizable options as opposed to creating a configurable product, which is ultimately composed of multiple simple products.